Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Crack UPSC CSC English. In our crash course for Prelims 2021, Inspire. So we are studying polity. Yes, so in today's session, we we'll learn about parliamentary group. Yes, what is mean by parliamentary group? Composition of group and functions as well. Yes, friends. So we'll start today's session. Before that, it's my pleasure to welcome you all on Unacademy, India's largest learning platform, where you will get live classes, structured courses, unlimited access for live and recorded classes with live tests. Yes, we 100 plus top educators will guide you throughout the journey. It's me, Rishikesh Inamdar guiding UPSC aspirants from last eight years. You can follow me on Unacademy and also you can join our Telegram group using this link. So friends, here is the mega subscription offer. So you can extend one year Unacademy subscription which valid till Prelims 2022. Yes, this offer is extended till today midnight. You can use the referral code RBI Life to extend validity of your Unacademy subscription. Yes, friends, those aspirants are planning to start their preparation with our paid courses. We have plus and iconic paid courses where also you will get 10% discount in the fee structure after using referral code RBI Life. So do not forget to use code RBI Life where we will guide you through me personally throughout your journey and for also optional subject you can opt RBI Life referral code to get 10% discount. Yes, here is the combo subscription for general studies and optional. You can opt for one year, two year or three year courses. Here also you will get 10% discount after using referral code RBI Life. So friends, those candidates are pursuing their graduation or after their 12th examination, they are planning to start their preparation. They can go with iconic subscription where you will get the all features of plus subscription along with you will get personal guidance, experts guidelines and a study planner. Yes, congratulations to all aspirants who have cracked their civil services main examination 2020. So, an academy is conducting a free comprehensive interview guidance program for all eligible aspirants. Yes, our interview panelists and mentors will guide them personally throughout the session. Yes, friends. In this session, you will, will provide you the complete DAF analysis, flexible schedule and mock interviews by experts. Yes, friends. Will provide you all the guidance required for the interview guidance program. Now, come to the taste series part. Those aspirants are planning to start their evaluation process after their revision. They can start to solve questions through our test series. So Unacademy is providing free test series for all aspirants. You have to just use code RBI Life to unlock these tests. Yes, friends, these are the new batches. Like we have NCRT batches, one year batches, two year batches, comprehensive batches for 2022. Yes. And also NCRT targeted batches. So you can join these batches. Yes, do not forget to join our Unacademic Combat. Yes, friends. India's biggest free scholarship test will provide you through our platform. So you can join this Unacademic Combat. Just you have to enroll for that. We are conducting every Sunday in the morning, 11 a.m. 
if we are talking about the medium we are providing in both medium english as well as hindi medium yes friends just you have to use code rbi life for the enrollment for an academy combat now we'll start today's topic parliamentary group yes friends as we have covered parliamentary forum in our previous lecture now today we will learn about parliamentary group yes so friends if we are talking about this parliament group so the experts like mn call and sl shadke shadde have nicely explained the rationale of indian parliamentary group ipg in following way like the establishment and development of relations among parliaments constitutes part of the regular activity of national parliaments so although promotion of inter parliamentary relations has for many years been a significant part of the work of parliamentarians and recently it has been received a new thrust due to the increased interdependence of nations in a global environment yes so basically it is imperative that the parliamentarians will join hands to safeguard democracy and work in synergy to confront the challenges before the world and convert them into opportunities to facilitate peace and prosperity in their countries as well as globally yes so these parliamentary groups where the member of parliaments of various parliaments will join hands to get together to discuss various aspects of development and their plan or they are discussing issues related with the democracy so how we can spread the democracy empower democracy in countries and all these discussions will help to create opportunities and which will facilitate peace and prosperity in their countries as well as globally so the parliamentarians from different parts of the world therefore have a forum where they can meet to discuss and find out solutions to their common problems yes so the member of parliaments from different parts of the world will take part in this parliamentary group yes so it is here that some sort of cross fertilization of ideas can take place not only between the older and the younger parliaments but also between parliamentarian working under different parliamentary systems yes so when we are talking about the exchange of ideas between various groups or members definitely it will work to empower the parliamentary system or the overall democracy in the world which will help to grow together with the peace and prosperity yes rahul in this today's lecture we'll see parliamentary group in our previous session we have covered parliamentary forum so just understand what is parliamentary group a parliamentary group where the member of parliaments from different parts of the world so parliamentarians from different parts of the world will join hands together to develop discuss various issues and they are convert these discussions into opportunities to facilitate 
peace and prosperity in their respective countries and globally as well. So when we are talking about the discussion of problems, these problems are no doubt discussed in intergovernmental conferences. However, those discussions are not so frank and free as they can be at conclave of legislators. Yes, definitely the various types of problems are also discussed in intergovernmental conferences, but those discussions are not so frank and free as they can be at conclave of legislators. Yes, so this platform will provide the frank and free discussions on various problems. Yes, interparliamentary relations thus assume great importance today. So when whole world is beset with many pressing problems, so the problems that are faced by one parliament today may confront another tomorrow. If we are talking about various issues, if we are talking about any general issue, for example, we'll take uh, any issue related with the environment. So for example, any parliament is facing issue of, like we can say, water pollution. So what happened? The particular parliament will take necessary action to curb that water pollution or minimize water pollution through various ways, various ideas and innovative ways. Now what happened when the member of parliaments throughout the world will discuss ideas related to any issue. Now those member of parliaments are raised issue and that in that their parliament regarding this environmental cause of water pollution then definitely if is there any other parliament also facing issue of water pollution in their country then definitely it will help with the experience and the innovative ideas was followed by other parliament yes so therefore essential that a link should be exist between various parliaments of the world so we can say this group is the link which exists between various parliaments of the world yes so this link is maintained by india through the exchange of delegations goodwill missions correspondence and documents yes so with the foreign parliaments through the machinery of the ipg that acts both as national group of the interparliamentary union that is ipu and also the indian branch of commonwealth parliamentary association that is cpa commonwealth parliamentary association which is known as cpa and national group of the interparliamentary union ipu yes so, the machinery of the interparliamentary group that act both as a IPU and CPU. Yes. Now we'll see the composition of the group. Yes, friends. So, the IPG is an autonomous body. Yes. So friends, this IPG is an autonomous body which was formed in the year 1949 in pursuance of a motion adopted by the Constituent Assembly. Yes. So the consent motion was adopted on August 16, 1948. Yes, the composition of Interparliamentary group IPG. Yes, it's not an interparliamentary group, there was doubt. It's an Indian parliamentary group. IPG stands for Indian Parliamentary Group. 
Yes. So Indian Parliamentary Group is an autonomous body. Yes. So it was formed in the year 1949 in pursuance of a motion was adopted by the Constituent Assembly. Yes, which is legislative. Now, the membership of Indian Parliamentary Group is open to all members of Parliament. Yes. The former members of Parliament can also become associate members of the group. Yes, the former members of Parliament can also become associate members of the group. So, a member of or ex-member of parliament can become a life member of the group on payment of a fixed life subscription. Yes, so a member or ex-member of parliament can become a life member of the Indian parliamentary group on payment of a fixed line subscription. Yes, so as we know in on our platform on academy also we are providing mega offer for subscription so same like in different way here is also subscription for a fixed life subscription but in on our platform on academy we are providing one year extension of a sus subscription yes now the associate members are entitled to limited rights only yes they are not entitled to representation at meetings and conferences of ipu and the cpa yes the associate member are not entitled to limited rights only yes correction it's are entitled the associate members means the former members of parliament which will assume the membership as a or they will become member of this group as associate members so these associate members are entitled to limited rights only these associate members are not entitled to representation at the meetings and conferences of IPU and CPA yes so the interparliamentary union and Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Yes. Then they are also not entitled to the travel concession provided to members by certain branches of CPA. Now remember, we'll use this short form for the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, that is CPA, and for Interparliamentary Union. IPU. So in the lecture, we'll use these short forms and Indian Parliamentary Group that is IPG. Now, the Speaker of the Lok Sabha is the ex official president of the group. Yes, the Parliamentary Group. So, Speaker of the Lok Sabha is the ex official president of this group now the deputy speaker of the lok sabha and the deputy chairman of the rajya sabha are the ex official vice presidents yes the speaker of the lok sabha is the president of the group whereas deputy speaker of the lok sabha and the deputy chairman of the Rajya Sabha are the ex official vice president of the group. And now the secretary general of the Lok Sabha, which acts as the ex official secretary general of the parliamentary group. Yes. Now we'll see objectives of the group. So the aims and objective of the group are mentioned below. Yes, to promote personal contacts between members of the Parliament of India, 
to study questions of public importance that are likely to come up before the parliament, arrange seminars, discussions and orientation courses. Yes, to study questions of public importance. So we'll see the various objectives of the parliamentary group. So, to promote personal contacts between members of the Parliament of India. Yes, to study questions of public importance that are likely to come up before the Parliament, arrange seminars, discussions and orientation courses. Yes, and bring out publication for the dissemination of information to the members of the group. Yes, to arrange lectures on political, defense, economic, social and educational problems by the members of the parliament and distinguished persons. Yes. So, to arrange lectures on political, defense, economic, social and educational problems by the members of the parliament and distinguished persons. Yes, to arrange visits to foreign countries with a view to develop contacts with members of other parliaments. Yes, so the objectives of the group like to promote personal contacts between the members of the parliament and to study questions of public importance to arrange lectures on political, defense, economic, social and educational problems by the members of parliament and distinguished persons. Yes, to arrange visits to foreign countries with a view to develop contacts with members of other parliaments. Yes. Now, after the objectives, we'll see the functions of the parliamentary group. Yes. Yes, friends. Now, after the objectives, we'll continue with the functions of the group. Yes. Now, the group acts as the link between the Parliament of India and the various parliaments of the world. Yes. So, this link is maintained through exchange of delegations, goodwill missions, correspondence, documents, etc. with foreign parliaments. Yes, the parliamentary group acts as a link between the parliament of India and the various parliaments of the world. Yes, and they are maintained through exchange of delegations, goodwill missions, correspondence, documents with foreign parliaments. Yes, the group functions as the national group of the IPU and main branch of the CPA in India. Yes, now address to the members of the parliament by visiting heads of the state and government of foreign countries and talks by eminent persons are arranged under the auspices of the group. Yes, the seminars and symposia on parliamentary subjects of topical interest are organized periodically at national as well as international level. Yes, where addresses to the members of the parliament by visiting heads 
of state government of foreign countries and talks by eminent persons are arranged under auspices auspices of the group yes the various subjects if we are talking about current issues related with the all subjects if we are talking about development or the any other issue like on infrastructure on environment on defense education so there are various subjects so this group is addresses to the member of the parliament by visiting heads of state and government of foreign countries yes various seminars and symposia on parliamentary subjects of topical interests are organized periodically yes at national as well as international level so various seminars are to be arranged by this group at national and international level to participate various burning issues or current issues yes the members of the group when visiting abroad are given letters of introduction to the secretaries of the national groups of the ipu and secretaries of the cpa branches yes when the member of the group visiting abroad are given letters of introduction to the secretary of national groups of the ipu and secretaries of the cpa branches so the indian missions in the countries of visit are also suitably informed so as to enable them to get assistance and usual courtesies yes as we know if we are talking about the arrangement of any particular visit when the all departments like actively participated if we are talking about foreign ministry or our external affairs ministry with the link of our indian missions in various countries they are arranging suitable and convenience program of the members of the group yes so only those members of the parliament who are members of the group of at least 6 months standing at the time of the composition of the delegation and may be included in the indian parliamentary delegations to foreign countries yes this is for only those members of the parliament who are members who are the members of the group for at least 6 months standing at the time of the composition of the delegation yes and uninterrupted flow of information to members regarding the activities of the group is maintained through the ipg indian parliamentary group newsletter brought out every quarter yes it is sent regularly to all members of the group including associate members yes so as per decision of the group an award of outstanding parliamentarian was instituted in the year 1995 yes so one of the decision of the group for an award of outstanding parliamentarian yes which was instituted in the year 1995 to be given annually a committee of five persons constituted by the speaker of the lok sabha invites and finalizes the nomination for the award yes so the outstanding parliamentarian award was 
instituted by the group in the year 1995 which to be given annually then next function to encourage bilateral relations yes to encourage bilateral relations The group constitutes parliamentary friendship groups with other countries in the parliament Yes so each friendship group consists of 22 sitting members of parliament where 15 from Lok Sabha and 7 from the Rajya Sabha so in proportion to the strength of parties in the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha the speaker of the lok sabha appoints the president and two vice president of the friendship group yes so to encourage bilateral relations the group constitutes pfg that is parliamentary friendship groups with other countries in the parliament so if we are talking about these parliamentary friendship groups which consist of 22 sitting members of the parliament were 15th from the lok sabha and 7th from the rajya sabha yes the aim and objective of the friendship group are to maintain political social and cultural contacts between the two countries and to assist in exchanges of information and experiences on issues relating to parliamentary activities yes after that we'll see the group and ipu yes so ipu is an international organization of the parliament of sovereign states yes so at present the ipu consists of 153 parliaments of sovereign nations which its aim is to work for peace and cooperation among peoples and for the firm establishment of representative institutions yes it forces contacts coordination and the exchange of experience among parliaments and parliamentarians of all members countries and contributes to better knowledge of the working representative institutions yes so ipu is an international organization so whether parliaments of sovereign states is a part of ipu so this ipu consists of 153 parliaments of sovereign nations yes which is work for peace and cooperation yes it forces contacts coordination and exchange of experience among parliaments and parliamentary parliamentarians of all major member countries and contributes to better knowledge of the working of representative institutions yes it also expresses its views on all burning questions of international importance for necessary effective implementation yes the effective implementation of parliamentary actions and suggest avenues for improving the working standard and capacity of international institutions yes so this ipu which expresses its views on all burning questions of international importance for necessary effective implementation of parliamentary actions yes so if we are talking about the main advantages of membership of the group in so far 
as it functions as the national group of the IPU are concerned are as it helps members of Indian parliamentary delegations to develop contacts with the parliamentarians of the member countries of the IPU. Yes, the main advantages of membership of the group. Yes, as its functions as the national group of the IPU are concerned, like it helps members of Indian parliamentary delegations to develop contacts with the parliamentarians of the member countries of the IPU. The events provide an opportunity to study and understand contemporary changes, reforms taking place in various countries of the world. Yes, it provides facility, facilities to meet parliamentarians in different countries during tours in abroad or in India when visiting parliamentarians are here. Yes. So, these are the main advantages which helps members of Indian parliamentary delegations to develop contacts with the parliamentarians of the member countries of the IPU. The events provide an opportunity to study and understand contemporary changes, changes and reforms which taking place in various countries of the world. It provides facilities to meet parliamentarians in different countries during tours in abroad or in India when visiting parliamentarians are here. Yes, the members of the group are eligible to visit foreign countries as members of the Indian parliamentary delegations to inter-parliamentary conferences. Yes, in the recent past, members of the group have been holding various positions in the IPU bodies namely office bearers in different committees of the IPU. Rapporteurs, chairman of drafting committees, etc. And by virtue of the same, the group has been successful in putting forward effectively the viewpoint of India on various important issues dealt in the IPU meetings. Yes. So, Indian Parliament Group and Inter-Parliamentary Union. After that, we will see the relation between our Indian Parliamentary Group and Commonwealth Parliamentary Association. Yes. So, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association is an association of about 17,000 Commonwealth Parliamentarians spread over 175 national, state, provi provincial and territorial parliaments. Yes, its aims are to promote
knowledge and understanding of the constitutional, legislative, economic, social and cultural systems within a parliamentary democratic framework with particular reference to the countries of the Commonwealth nations and to countries having close historical and parliamentary associations with it. Yes. Its mission is to promote the advancement of parliamentary democracy by enhancing knowledge and understanding of democratic governance and by building an informed parliamentary community able to deepen the Commonwealth's democratic commitment and to further cooperation among its parliaments and legislators. Yes. So, So, the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, which is the association of about 17,000 Commonwealth parliamentarians spread over 175 national, state, provincial and territorial parliament. Yes, the aim to this to promote knowledge and understanding the constitutional, legislative, economic, social and cultural systems within a parliamentary democratic framework. Yes, its mission is to promote the advancement of parliamentary democracy by enhancing knowledge and understanding of democratic governance and by building an inform parliamentary community able to deepen the Commonwealth's democratic commitment and to further cooperation among its parliaments and legislatures. Yes, the main advantages of membership of the group insofar as it functions as the main branch of the CPA in India are concerned. Yes, now, if we are talking about the main advantages of membership of the group, like insofar as it functions as the main branch of CPA in India are concerned, it follows like conferences and seminars. Yes, membership provides an opportunity for participation in the plenary and regional conferences, seminars, visits and exchanges of delegations. Yes, publications. All members of the group are entitled to receive free of charge the parliamentarian quarterly and the newsletter yes the first reading every second month yes these are published by the cpa secretariat london yes all members of the group are entitled to receive the parliamentarian which is quarterly And the newsletter, yes, first reading every second month. So, after the conferences and seminars, 
the main advantage is like publications then information so the parliamentary information and reference center of the cpa secretariat provides information to members on parliamentary constitution and commonwealth matters yes then introductions the cpa branches readily assist in arranging introductions to members visiting other jurisdictions yes so information and introductions are also the advantages so there are sharing of information on the subjects like parliamentary constitution constitutional and commonwealth matters then parliamentary facilities yes so members are members visiting other commonwealth countries are normally accorded parliamentary courtesies specially access to debates and local members so parliamentary facilities so those members visiting other commonwealth countries are normally accorded parliamentary courtesies specially access to debates and local members yes then travel facilities so some branches provide for a designated number of their members annually to undertake study tours of commonwealth and other countries to compare political and procedural developments other branches arrange ad hoc visits yes so these are the main advantages of the membership of the group yes conferences and seminars publications information introductions parliamentary facilities and travel facilities so in today's session friends we have we have studied about parliamentary group yes now we have studied what is this parliamentary group then composition of the group so indian parliamentary group is an autonomous body yes so this autonomous body was formed in the year 1949 in pursuance of a motion adopted by the constituent assembly yes the membership of ipg is open to all members of parliament then the former members of parliament can also become associate members of the group yes so there are the speaker of the lok sabha is the ex officio president of the group deputy speaker of the lok sabha and deputy chairman of the rajya sabha are ex officio vice president of the group then the secretary general of the lok sabha acts as the ex officio secretary general of the group then objectives of the group yes which now aims and objects of the group like to promote personal contacts 
between members of the Parliament of India. Then to study questions of public importance, to arrange lectures on political, defense, economic, social and educational problems by the members of the parliament and distinguished persons, to arrange visits to foreign countries with a view to develop contacts with members of other parliaments. Yes, then functions of the group. So, the group acts as a link between the Parliament of India and the various parliaments of the world. Yes, this link is maintained through exchange of delegations, goodwill missions, correspondence documents and so on with foreign parliaments. Yes. The group functions are the national group of the IPU and main branch of the CPA in India. Then addresses to the members of the parliament by visiting heads of the of state and government of foreign countries. Yes. Then various seminars conducted by the group. Yes. So, as per the decision of the group, an award of outstanding parliamentarian was instituted in the year 1995, which to be given annually. Yes. So, a committee of five persons, five persons constituted by the Speaker of the Lok Sabha, Yes, invites and finalizes the nomination for the award. Then, to encourage bilateral relations. Yes, the parliamentary group constitutes a parliamentary friendship groups. Yes, so each friendship group consists of 22 sitting members of parliament were 15 from the Lok Sabha and 7 from the Rajya Sabha. Yes. The speaker of the Lok Sabha appoints the president and two vice presidents of the friendship group. Yes. The aims and objectives of the friendship group are to maintain political, social and cultural contacts between the two countries and to assist in exchanges of information and experiences on issues relating to parliamentary activities. Then we have studied the relation between the group and IPU. Yes. So IPU Interparliamentary Union which consists of 153 parliaments of sovereign nations then the main advantages of membership of the group like it helps members of Indian parliamentary delegations to develop contact with parliamentarians of other member countries of the IPU which provide, a, provide an opportunity to study and understand contemporary changes and reforms yes which provides Facilities to meet parliamentarians in different countries during tours in abroad or in India when visiting parliamentarians are here. Yes, the members of the group are eligible to visit foreign countries as members of the Indian parliamentary delegations to inter-parliamentary conferences. Then the group and CPA. Yes. The CPA is an association of about 17,000 Commonwealth parliamentarians. Yes. So it aims to promote knowledge and understanding of the constitutional, legislative, 
economic, social and cultural systems. Yes. So its mission to promote advancement of parliamentary democracy. Yes. The main advantages of the membership of the group like it functions as the main branch of the CPA in India like which provides conferences and seminars we are conducting conferences and seminars on various issues then publications information introductions parliamentary facilities and travel facilities yes so we have covered today's session of parliamentary group in the next lecture we'll learn about new topic supreme court so friends do not forget to join our telegram group using this link and also you can use referral code rbi live to get 10 percent discount in an academy paid subscription like plus and iconic courses Friends, do not forget to like, share and subscribe on Academy videos. Yes. That's it for today's session. See you in the next lecture. Till the time. Keep revising. Keep studying. All the best.